guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore video game content that goes unused, altered, and unseen. So I recently covered Parappa the Rapper here on Lost Bits, and originally I was going to include um, Jammer Lammy there, but never really hearing anyone talk about it, I guess I assumed people really didn't care about this game. Boy, was I wrong. You guys absolutely stepped on the gas with the likes on the last video, so as always, if you do enjoy the video, be sure to let me and the YouTube algorithm know with a like down below. And really quick before we get going, a quick shout out to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Coming in at around half the price of other premium brands, Raycon offers premium sound for everyone from rapping dogs to DJ bears. These bad boys feature a compact design, 6 hours of playtime, plenty of bass, and seamless Bluetooth pairing. With the weather getting nicer outside, these have become an absolute must for me on my nighttime walks. Co-founded by Ray J and endorsed by several fellas like Snoop, the earbuds come in a range of colors, patterns, and fit options, and I really can't overstate how nice it is to wear these without any dangling wires. So if you'd like to check them out, be sure to click the link in the description or head on over to buyraycon.com forward slash tetra and get 15% off your purchase. And if you're not entirely pleased, Raycon also offers a nifty 45-day return policy to boot. Thanks again to Raycon for supporting the channel, and with all of that said, it's time to believe and check out some Jammy Lammy Lost Bits. Alright, so just like in the Parappa video, here let's start things off by looking at some pre-release content. Oh yeah, I will be referencing the Parappa Lost Bits a lot in this video, so if you haven't yet watched it, be sure to do so. Anyways, first are a pair of screenshots of the game, which appear to be from a prototype build, as some changes from the final can be seen. In this screenshot, which was found in a press kit for the game, we can see an early version of Stage 1. Things are mostly the same, but it can be noted that the backdrop here appears black instead of blue, as seen in the final. The drum kit is different, as it appears blue instead of purple, and lacks the big M on the bass drum. And lastly, here Katie Cat is seen in the outfit she normally has in Stage 7 in the game, so I guess the different getup we see in the final release for Stage 1 might have been a later addition. Then next is a mysterious screenshot that's found in the Um Jammer Lammy Handbook Guide, and this appears to be a screenshot from a much earlier point in the game's development. The font for the UI here is different and is apparently the same as the one used in Parappa 1. The characters appear to be in front of some sort of brick building or something. PJ and Parappa both appear to be holding t-shirts. The graphics for the box are different on the sides. There's what looks to be some sort of debugging text on top of them, although it's very hard to read. There's no lyrics in the screenshot. Yeah, this does anyone know more about this was added later. And lastly, there's what appears to be an early design of Lammy in the top left and right of the screenshot. But yeah, very little is known about the screenshot, and even co-creators Ronnie Greenblatt and Masaya Matsura didn't offer any more context, as they too don't seem to know much about it. When asked, Mr. Greenblatt responded and stated, That must be a very rare picture of UJL in development. I've never seen it before, but it does look like one of my preliminary designs for Lammy on the wall in the background. The development team would do tests for animation and sometimes make backgrounds themselves. I didn't see many of those tests, I don't remember that one. And Mr. Matsura didn't have much else to offer either outside of just acknowledging that the top left graphic was indeed a second scrapped design of Lammy. So yeah, based on Mr. Greenblatt's answer, it's likely that some of the developers may have just been testing backgrounds and animations and somehow this screenshot wound up in the guide. And speaking of prototype builds, there are currently three known pre-release builds that have made their way into the public. First up is a pre-release demo featuring the first stage of the game that's found in the PlayStation Underground Jam Pack from winter of 1999. Sadly, not too much is different in most of these builds. For this one, the title screen has some obvious color changes as the demo version here uses yellow and green as opposed to black and red as seen in the final release. In my Parappa Lost Bits video, I mentioned a few regional lyric changes that were made for the North American release, and similarly, we can see a line that was changed in this demo, probably for similar reason. Here in Stage 1, instead of Chop Chop Master Onions, you can play on an island, he instead says, you can play in hell. No surprise here why this was changed, especially given the game's E for Everyone rating, but I'll have a bit more to say about this later. The next pre-release build is from a demo disc called Euro Demo 50, obviously distributed in Europe. Here basically the only notable change is once again seen with the game's title screen, as this demo has a yellow circle on the bottom instead of, again, the red one. And lastly for the prototype build is one that was actually just found over a month ago as I'm making this video, as part of Hidden Palace's Project Deluge. 
Anyways, this prototype carries a build date of January 22nd, 1999, placing it only 17 days before the build date of the final version that was launched in Japan. Now, despite how close it was to release though, there are actually quite a few changes seen in this prototype's cutscenes. There's everything from different audience members seen here walking away, a cleaner texture for the road here, as although this prototype one looks more realistic, it was really low resolution. The buildings are sometimes different in the background for some reason. Some graphic layering wasn't yet finished. Some backgrounds aren't yet animated in this prototype. We got a different guitar morphing animation here. Hell appears more deep fried in this prototype. And this cutscene was almost entirely different. Like I said, pretty crazy that so many changes were made between the final release and this build from only 17 days prior. There are actually a few more minor changes, and if you're interested, check out this great comparison video by Pips. I'll have it linked for you down in the description. And next up, oddly enough, the intro animation for the Na Na On Sha development studio was slightly different. Instead of a kaleidoscope-like intro transition as seen in the final, in the prototype, the animation for the logo starts off with an upside-down U, which then transforms into the logo. Again, a pretty odd change to make so close to the release. And lastly for this prototype is a text graphic that appears different in the prototype listed as AL underscore ER. Now Google Translate is telling me that the text used in the prototype translates to just communication error, and the one seen in the final translates to something like the memory card access has failed. It's a pretty similar message, and I guess it might have been changed to be more explicit in regards to what the communication error was with. And on that note, now let's finally switch gears and talk about the final release of the game. Let's start things off here with some unused graphics. We got this off texture that's thought to have been meant to be used for selecting no guitar effects during a stage. There's these two cool textures in red and yellow, suggesting that maybe at one point the word cool would flash these colors when the player would reach cool status. There's this set of button input sprites that do look very similar to the ones that are used, but apparently a separate sheet is used instead. And also the L and R sprites here specify R1 and L1, which I don't believe is seen in the game. And then there's also these unused graphics for Lessons 1 through 4. Now Lessons were seen in both Parappa the Rapper 1 and 2, and for whatever reason, they go absent in this spin-off title. So I guess the existence of these graphics suggests that the Lessons might have also been intended at some point to be seen here. Next up are some low-resolution sprites of Parappa, Lamy, and Teriyaki Yoko meant for Stage 6. It's likely these were intended to be swapped in when the camera was far away from the character, so players wouldn't notice the lower quality. Then we got some unused eye textures for Parappa looking angry, as well as completely unimpressed that you haven't subscribed yet. Similarly, there's unused angry looking eye textures for Katie Cat with an angry mouth texture to match, several unused eye and mouth textures for Masan, and finally literally cross-eyed textures for both Lamy and Rami. Interestingly for these last Lamy textures, these were actually briefly seen in a promotional music video for Um Jammer Lamy Now, an arcade adaptation which we'll touch more on later in this video. But yeah, weird that these textures were only used in this video here. Then lastly for the unused graphics is a screenshot from the credit segment also sporting this Japanese kanji symbol as well as X a player in a big red font. Now apparently this kanji here translates to temporary, signifying the placeholder nature of this image, and XA here very likely refers to the file name extension that's used for the game's music data. Then moving along, we got several alterations seen between the different regional releases of this game. Just like with Parappa and the prototypes I mentioned earlier, the final release also, unsurprisingly, features a different logo between the Japanese and worldwide releases. The Japanese logo opted to use green and purple text on fire, as opposed to the more tame red and black one seen in the other regions. Similarly, the discs themselves were quite different between the regions. It's not unusual for box art and cover art to be different between regions, but man, North America definitely got shafted with the designs here. Then, also like we saw in my Parappa video, some lyrics were altered between the regions. First off, for Stage 5, despite the stage still very much featuring logging, some lyrics were changed in reference to it only in the North American release. The line, chop all of them down, every single one down, was changed to, come on and get down, way down to the low ground, Chopping trees down for the fun was changed to knowing that we're here for the fun. And lastly, the second part of ain't this fun, having fun in the sun, I love chopping trees just for fun, was changed to I love rocking to the beat just for fun. 
I think it's equally likely this change was made in North America to avoid controversy with environmentalist groups or since mentioning chopping down trees just for fun might not have been a good suggestion for kids playing this game. Also again, like we saw in the Parappa video, although these lyrical changes were made to the audio, there's an instance where the in-game subtitles weren't changed accordingly. Not only are they not updated, they're just a mess of a hybrid of the two regions. Come on and get down, way single one down, uh, okay? Then lastly for the regional changes is probably one of the biggest ones I've covered on Lost Bit so far, as the entire plot point and backdrop to the game stage 6 was changed. Now this goes back to that changed line I mentioned earlier dealing with playing in hell being changed to playing in an island. Well, this is because the stage 6 cutscene, locale, and basically everything except for most of the dialogue was changed from Lamy being sent to hell after dying in the Japanese and European release after slipping on a banana peel, to her just being flung onto an island and back in time after getting her belt stuck on a doorknob in the North American release. These changes were made in order to attain an E for Everyone ESRB rating in North America, as I suppose the inclusion of Death and Hell was deemed a little too much for players under 13. Other changes to the stage between versions also includes Lammy sporting a camo getup in the North American release instead of just her regular getup in the other regions, and some more lyrics were changed, like here with Angel being changed to a friend, again in line with removing the religious references. The angel been mean to me, that's for sure. My friend's been mean to me, that's for sure. Some pretty big changes, especially to the plotline, but I guess the developers and Sony knew that a T14 rating would likely impact sales of the game to a non-negligible extent. Then next up we got some more unused error text strings found in the game, and again, just like in Parappa, whoever wrote these up really likes all caps and exclamation marks. Highlights here include pause error, free error, and VB is no good. And last up, Um Jammer Lammy contains data for a scrapped version of the first stage in which you could play as Parappa instead. Here's a quick sample of the scrapped version's audio. I'm in a fly, hi. Fly, hi. Sky, hi. Sky, hi. Cry, no. Cry, loud. Additionally, there's also leftover audio files for this Parappa variant of the player winning on cool mode as well as failing the stage. Here's both. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations. Yeah. By the way, how have you been, teacher? Again. What a nightmare. Now apparently these can be heard by playing stage 6 of Parappa the Rapper and then swapping the disc to Um Jammer Lammy or something, yeah, I don't know. But otherwise this doesn't normally go used. Furthermore, oddly enough, despite being scrapped, the Parappa version of the song is apparently still found in the Um Jammer Lammy official soundtrack. And surprisingly, exclusive to the North American release of this game, by using this GameShark code, you can actually access this scrapped Parappa variant, though unfortunately, being incomplete, although the song functions, none of the background stuff does. Still pretty cool though. Now this scrapped Parappa version of Stage 1 would later go on to be included in the Um Jammer Lammy Now arcade game a Japan-exclusive machine where players would play the game using guitar peripherals similar to how the Guitar Hero arcade machines use now. That said, these arcade machines were apparently pretty scarce, and probably even more so now. And being Japan-exclusive, I guess not many got to see this Parappa variant of Stage 1 as intended. Hopefully, if this game ever does get a modern-day remaster, they include this bit of scrap content. But till then, if you really want the full experience, time to start booking a flight to Japan. And that's that for the Parappa series on Lost Bits, at least for now. Just wanted to quickly thank you all for the support on these two videos, I never thought they'd do half as well as they have. Again, if you haven't yet, be sure to check out the Parappa video. But as always guys, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in a bit.